recognize the recognition of the entire Ms. Una Scott, appreciation for her two point three three years of service with Rawson County, May 2018. She's not here. Then we have Ms. Linda M. Turner, in appreciation for 25 years of service with Rawson County, and she's not here. We appreciate what they do for us. And we move on to the public hearing. One A, sale of two tracks totaling 6.71 acres to Darwin County Animal Shelter, incorporated $5. Meeting one of the three. On this. Yes, Mr. Chairman, yes. I'm a member of the Council of Bill Hatfield, and I'm here on behalf of the Joint Access Energy Humane Society. Uh, just a, a bit of background. We initiated a tackle campaign back in October with the goal of raising $1 million to build a new shelter. We are at about $370,000 of making that goal. Uh, and the land is adjacent to the existing shelter. Uh, and it is necessary for us to have the property so that we can uh, eventually construct the new shelter. And I'll be glad to answer any questions that the council may Appreciate your work. Especially being from Florida. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Just remember, Florida, part of Darling. I like that. We I want to remember that. You said you said it's 1818. County Historian will be glad to be here. We'll call this the Does anyone else wish to speak? If not, I declare the program here in closed. Hearing 1B, ordinance number 18, National Court, in order to make appropriation for ordinary county proposed for Dalton County for the fiscal year beginning June 1st, 2018, and ending June 30th, 2019, to provide for the expenditures thereof and to provide for the payment thereof as amended. Second reading. Does anyone wish to speak? Mr. Chair, this is the county budget, correct? Yes. On the <laughs> Thank you. Anyone else? If not, I declare a public year in order to bring the National Board to close. 1C. Order to bring the National Board in order to designate the agency of the county for alcohol and drug abuse plan for programs to make appropriation pursuant to section 6 27 40 B and 12 33 245 B. And C of the 1976 Code of Law of South Carolina has been for Dalton County for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2018, and ending June 30th, 2019. Second read. Anyone wish to speak? If not, I declare a public hearing on this number 1805. Closed. Now we'll call the order. Indication of the Pledge of Allegiance. Mr. Douglas, indication of the <laughs>
personal appearances. Mr. H. Cobb. Dalton Chamber. Good evening. I just wanted to give the council a report on what all the chamber has been doing and what we've got going on. Um, as most of you know, we had an event entitled Bow Ties and Pearls, which was held on April 21st in the backyard of South Pearl. Um, from what I saw and from the reports that I received, the living believe everyone in attendance had a wonderful time and we plan on making this an annual event. Um, it was not an event to raise money for the chamber. It was just an event to bring Darlington City, Darlington County, and the surrounding communities together for just fun, food, and camaraderie. Now this Thursday, on May the 10th, we are having Greater Darlington Chamber of Commerce is hosting Open House Darling. There will be balloons, banners, realtors, bankers, <coughs> and hopefully buyers all over the city and county of Darlington. This initiative was the brainchild of Rhonda Brown, who sits on my board of directors. Beginning at 1 o'clock on the 10th, we hope to have as many properties open to the public as possible. This has been advertised from Miami to New York. Press releases have been out in all of these papers. Um, during the afternoon, there will be a historical tour. At the end of the day, everyone is invited back to the chamber for a reception and a recap of the day. Toyanna Smith, who most of you know, will be at the chamber doing a book signing of her new book, A Handbook to Unleashing Your Potential. And then at 7 that evening, the first concert of the season will begin on Liberty Lane. We just want everyone to see why we love Darlington. Not Darlington, the city, Darlington, the community, the county. We have another ribbon cutting on Wednesday the 16th at Papa John's, located off Food Barn. Everyone in attendance here, County Council, is invited to attend. They will, after the ribbon cutting, have free pizza for everyone, and then all day long, there will be a 50% off code on our Facebook page for pizza. So you can call and you'll have the code if you go to my Facebook page and you'll be able to get pizza for 50% off all day that day. And then on Thursday, it's Ladies Day at the Chamber of Commerce. At noon, I'm sorry men are not invited, but it's just for the ladies. At <coughs> noon, we will have a light lunch. We'll have a chamber member who is a Mary Kay representative, and Toyanda Smith will be back. So the ladies can come and visit Ms. Ketter. She'll just do as many makeovers, giving away samples, and Toyanda will be to discuss her book. And as always, we're in the process of planning Freedom Fest. Now, that brings me to one point. We have a new fireworks company. Pyrotechnico is doing it. And I am very sorry that I was not here last month. My father-in-law had a stroke and I had to be gone. Um, family calls and you have to go. Um, but I understand that there might have been a little confusion about the fireworks at Freedom Fest last year. Chamber of Commerce hired a company to do the fireworks. It was Munnerlin Fireworks. And they were supposed to come in, set up the fireworks, prepare them, prep them, 
load them and lock them, and then shoot them off. We don't touch them. That's what we pay a company to do. And Chief Kavanaugh oversees it. Well, they were six hours late getting there, and we knew we had a problem. But they got there, and they started setting them up. Well, then the rains came. So it's like no one are. Then the rains came, and they did come. Well, they continued to set them up, but they didn't cover them. And if you do not cover pyrotechnics, you have a problem. Because if they get wet and you decide you're going to shoot them, they will explode. Possibly in your face or on people or explode and injure people who are around you. So Pat told them when they had a lull in the rain, he radioed me and he said, we have a big issue here. They did not lock them or load and lock them properly. And they told Pat, well, we can shoot a few of these. And Pat said, you're not going to shoot anything on my watch. Because this is just a recipe for disaster. So they said, that's fine. We'll just put it back in our supply. So somebody got fireworks and possibly had some injuries. Um, the county of Darlington was a presenting sponsor last year. The money that we got from H tax, we put it at, in the general fund, and the county of Darlington was listed as presenting free defense, not the fireworks. You presented free defense. So you were a presenting sponsor, not a fireworks So I just wanted to make that clear. We didn't touch the fireworks. We had nothing to do with it. That would be like me trying to drive a, a big old truck. I'm not capable. I'm not capable of dealing with fireworks this year. So I just wanted to make sure that's clarified. And we do have a new company this year, Pyrotechnica. Any questions? Thank you. Mr. Chairman, at this time I move to amend the agenda to bring forward executive session for discussion of a personnel matter. Second the motion. All in favor? Mr. Chairman, at this time I move to go into executive session with members of council, our county attorney, as well as our county administrator for particular information regarding personnel matters. Mr. Chairman, I'll second that motion, but I have a question. I don't see that list. Good, yeah, I do. It's so dark in here, I can't. Mean. <laughs> All the eyes on the table. Yeah. Um, Aye. All the eyes, please. No action taken. Any Move to accept consent agenda item 6A through 6E as information. Any discussion? <coughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Pass. Approval of minutes. Minutes of public hearing and regular meeting April 2nd, 2018. Any motion? Any <coughs> motion to accept the minutes? Any second? Second. No correction. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, ayes have. Minutes of budget work session April 23rd, 2018. Any motion? Any second? Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, ayes have. Minutes of Dalton County, County Municipal Council, County Council Board of Education and Legislative Delegations, April 30th, 2018. Move to carry over. Second. Move to carry right. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? 
for which the procedural act may be used to provide the maximum time for which the tax may be imposed, to provide the cost of the policy to the utilities funding from the proceeds of the tax to provide a county-wide referendum and to provide the contents of the ballot which in such referendum to authorize the referendum on the insurance of not exceeding twenty thousand dollars general obligation bond or bond county to provide for the conduct of such referendum to provide for the ministry of the tax to provide for the payment of the tax and provide for other matters related to them. First need to be asked to Resolution, resolution number 689, EMS week proclamation, designating the week of May the 20th through 26, 2018 as emergency medical service week. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed. I have committee reports. None of the other items. Appointments to boards, commissions, committees, where there are expired terms of vacancy to pay the board for the carry over from me. Uh, to Mr. Evans. Yeah. Uh, carry over, please. <coughs> Mr. Nevis. Mr. Cope. Mr. Chair. Yes. Yes. Um, my point, I need to make an adjustment on my parks and recreation uh, committee. Uh, the one that I appointed last year failed to appear at any of the meetings. I think I talked to Parker Al, uh, <coughs> a local attorney with a young child of four years old who played T ball. And he's willing to go on that committee and be present for those meetings. So I'll move to <coughs> Edwards Al to uh, the remaining term. Second. Second. All in favor? Say aye. Aye. All opposed? Aye. Thank you. Appointment <coughs> right. to the Courthouse Instruction Advisory Committee. Physical, disabled, representative, and the chairperson. Mr. Chairman, yes. I move to remove this from the agenda until after the referendum. I second. All in favor say aye. Aye. All in favor say aye. 11C, appointment to the PD Workforce Development Board. Just to remodel this building. 
This one that you're looking on now addresses a couple of different things if you look at the scope there. It asks, what would it also, based on the information from the next one, it asks, what would it take to incorporate everything in this building? The answer to that is going to be it has to be expanded. There's no doubt about that. And it will address what it would take to expand this building. It also address can the programming space that has already been re realized as needed <coughs> be put into a building in the footprint just behind us here of 30 to 33,000 square foot. Then it will address can you put the rest of the programming for space back in this back in this building with the renovations. Um, all that's going to be necessary before you can really make any informed decision of. Can we fit everything in the 33,000 square foot building? We have to build a two-story building over there. And can we put remodel this building appropriately and remain with the administration in this building? But it will not address the logistics of service of what happens if probate has to move out for a period of time. It will not no, address no, it, any well, of those questions. It may slightly hint to the fact that if you choose the new building, this building would then have a couple floors free and you'd be moving around in this building, but exactly how that's going to happen, no. I don't, I don't think any of the studies are going to address that unless you ask them, and I don't think, quite honestly, I wouldn't want them to tell us how we're going to move everything there other than we're going to build, re remodel, if you do this building, you're going to remodel two floors, put the people that are going there, and then everybody will have to go on those two floors for a while, remodel the other floors and move around. It'll give part of what you're asking for, but it's not going to give you a map and say this well, is I'm asking for it. I'm just making sure that I mean, laying it out there of what it is going to From that information, it makes it easier for you to look at and say, well, build a new building. It makes it feasible to remodel this building for the remainder of the offices that will stay in this building by this process. Well, the new building will take in this. Uh, All the judicial yes. And then by moving that out, you can remodel this building with occupancy here. Where so it, it will look at remodeling and phases of what we'll do with the purpose of this. Any other? No. All opposed? Aye. 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 All opposed? Ayes have 11-8 agreement with Microbank International for a suitable report for a proposed renovation of the existing Johnson County Coal Pass Administration Bill. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Sale of two tracks totaling 6.71 acres for Johnson County Animal Shelter. Five options. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, aye. 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 11G, Accommodation Tax Advisory Committee, FY18-19 funding, recommending recommendation page 188. Mr. Chairman, I move to amend the committee's Sorry. recommendation. Uh, there we go. Got to uh, I would like to delete the Hartsville Community Center, uh, the 8,500, take 1,500 of that, give it to the Butler Heritage Foundation, and divide the remainder between the Martyr Egg Scramble, the Pilot Club, Sweet Potato Festival, and the Society Hill Catfish Festival. Larry, come over. Any discussion? Yeah, I oppose. I'm opposed because We've chosen a committee uh, call that we had difficulty getting somebody to serve on that, and we got a person to come in. The, I sat through these committees and carried for 10 years. The boards are basically the accommodation tax based on validation of hotel models. There's some variations in that, I understand that, but if we're going to go down to the path of getting sales tax, and then you start pulling away from projects that the, the projects are awarded based on those who validate the hotels. I'm not saying some of these others aren't good projects, but there's a difference between a person coming to the hotel and spending three days in town versus somebody coming in for two or three hours in and out. So the, the committee has served to try to validate the best they can where the most money is being spent, which generates the most revenue for the county. 
So I would caution if we had to go against the committee because there's people spend a lot of time. If we start going against our start, we don't have volunteers for the committee, then we've got a bigger problem. It's already a problem because the money's been cut to a nominal amount, 25000 basically a third of the plus. So I think there's a danger to precedent by going against the committee, and then I think it opens up a, a bigger discussion about uh, how taxes are generated, particularly with the PSL tax. Mr. Chair, yeah. I agree completely with Mr. Brown. Uh, we, have a, we have a committee that is designated to do this and, and suggest what we do. What's the point of having it if they don't, we don't trust that they're going through the correct process? Mr. Chair, yes. as far as someone who is, who represents the rural area, looking at this, Carson Center Theater is its own taxing entity. The city has spent a million dollars, or is going to spend a million dollars, on a water park. The rest of the accommodation tax dollars were going to parks for yoga fest and some other things, completely leaving out Darlington, Lamar, and Society Hill. Now, I don't have no one I represent is on this list to start with. But if you're worried about a dangerous precedent, when you take every dime of the accommodation tax and send it to one municipality, rather than saying that no one from Lamar, no one from Society Hill, no one from Darlington is worthy of accommodation tax, to me that is a dangerous precedent, not funding something that's already funded by the city in its own tax amendment. I think that's the point being is that these are based off of who's bringing in most revenue from the county. And then we could fund the other ones, as they said, in the hospitality. We did talk about that last year, but the other festivals get 20, I think we talked about $2,500 coming out of hospitality to fund those stuff. But you've got, you've got some events that are have an economic impact of half a million dollars that you're going to take from. Well, for somebody to come in, in your county and the Department of Tourism has a factor of seven. They face money for seven times before it leaves the county. So if somebody spends a thousand dollars, it's worth seven thousand dollars. So some of these so I, I was having these meetings and all their request was to validate who's coming in. It wasn't that the projects weren't worthy, but it was a determination of who generating the most people coming in as hotels. But we did talk about using the hospitality funds to fund one of those festivals that did not validate. But honestly, everybody that I, I, everybody has an option to validate how many people are bringing in these tours. Well, the, the center theater, if it is that successful, why does it need to take the money from Lamar Society Hill, which is, both of them are small and the funding sources that they have are limited. The center theater has been, and if you take in the, if you take in Society Hill and you go up to Henry's place, those people who stayed there, who stayed multiple days, who spent thousands of dollars, that's not considered inside of this. And the same with the Catfish Festival, the number of people who come in and stay there is is not being considered. I don't know how many people come in. They're for asking. Lamar. They're asking every year to validate. That's the committee has said if you bring it to the end, all they're asking is to validate it. How are you validating the center theater for $8,500 when they have daily shows? Those people are not spending the night. Well, no, they are in conjunction with the hotel, validating the different hotels. They ask them if you're here for the festival, a beauty pageant, et cetera, they're documented. Yes. Yes. <coughs> I uh, hardly agree with <coughs> Mr. Bowers and the ideology. We, we often differ because we have a few cases that I do agree with him. And uh, because I'm 
very part of the book, whatever it is. I made no bones about it. Most of y'all know that most of the council and uh, one of the things that we do know that the book of the heritage foundation of the heritage group brings a lot of money into the park still. And uh, if, to add some humor to it, I would like to see the proposal made by Mr. Flowers and all of the money and all of the agents <laughs> and uh, money that uh, he has spoken about would go to Buck for Heritage. But I do think that it's important that we make record of the Heritage does contribute quite a bit with regard to the hospitality of uh, revenues. It's no question about that. And, um, we, and that's one of them. The, the, the more older, the older festivals that um, recognize the historical contributions in education and culture in Arlington County um, in its African American um, heritage. And uh, I, 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 I don't support that. I do support giving more money to us parents in that. Thank you. Ms. Nicholson, the reason I said the 1500 they were recommended 2500 they requested 4000 That would bring them up to their requested amount. But uh, it's not only going to the book of heritage. It can be split between the eggs from that fish New Beach and Rice Festival and uh, Sweet Potato Festival. Yeah, I understand that. You can between all of them, not just one of them. I'm just partial to what I Mr. Chairman, one comment. I, I've sat in 10 years of those meetings, and not one council person has been in any of those meetings, except for me and Johnson and Mr. Webb. They asked specifically, can you just validate? What you're trying to determine what you say. I have one one more that said they put 3,000 people in the hotel room in the dorm and it was a little bit of a stretch. It was not quite a big room. It wasn't that the projects aren't working. It's a question of how do you validate it. And we've asked the committee to make a decision based on the best value. They're, again, they're not, they're not saying any of these projects aren't worthwhile. And that was based on. Hospitality, not saying don't get the money, but just the work back in the hospitality. There's only $25,000 in the accommodation tax. But the yoga and healing arts festival, they justified that they had, I, I, don't, I, didn't tend, I don't attend them to me like they did before. Well, we, and council members have always been discouraged from attending the meetings so that they could have open discussions without council's influence in making the recommendations. And in previous years, we have taken the recommendation. But when you take every dollar of it and send it to one municipality and completely leave out well, the other three municipalities who have long-term successful festivals, what's the value? What's the value? I mean, quantified. Well, so let, let's quantify this then. All those years we had Reno Fest, we threw thousands and thousands of dollars at it. It was so successful that it folded. And then they went in the center theater who had an opportunity last year to fold to all the person that did it. No, they folded the because it was a. Mr. Chairman, yes. yeah. proper etiquette is to, when a speaker is speaking, but they ought to be quiet. And when you request to speak, you ask the chairman for permission. I apologize, Mr. Chairman. It's just it's rather heated. Well, he did something for I, I would just make my last point. Let's share the comment. This becomes a point of what we consider to be tourism that we exclude tourism from any other discussions about self tax. Well, this is a question of tourism. Mr. Doug, why not call it a question? Call a question. Uh, let's go over. Roll call. Roll call. You can begin with me. This is on the amendment. I yes, will aye. So, aye.
later this month. Many of the hospitality meetings I do know personally to Dr. Kath Heavey has attended those meetings because he's our director. I do know personally that the former is the member of Lewis with the promise of the director of the Heritage Foundation attended those meetings. So there were several um, uh, people who, who represented the African American community in the community, not just Artsville, that have attended the
that two two million dollar fund balance is approximately a actually a four hundred percent fund balance, extremely high. Um, but it's very limited on what you can use this for. You can't go buy radios for EMS or radios for the sheriff or that type of thing. Um, but this is for software being used inside the center. We'll also get approximately eighty thousand dollars back from the state as part of the incentive program that has been in place for years for um, centers to do this. Now there is a emergency police dispatch component of this, an emergency fire dispatch component of this, that the fire service and law enforcement services can choose to put specific protocols in place to help dispatchers dispatch receive the information they want to get every time and send to their officers or to their responding firefighters every time. Um, but the primary cost and motivation here is the pre-arrival emergency medical dispatch instruction. Um, I have a question. It, it, it dawned on me the other day as I was riding from Florida to Darlington and saw a fellow walking with the traffic uh, on US 52 and he looked like he might have been a little inebriated. This was in the middle of the day. <coughs> I started to call 911. If I called 911 on my cell phone, who would I have gotten? According to which tower you at and where you're located, where you're talking about between the two, you are likely to get Florence's 911. Florence County's 911. They'll find out where you are they would transfer the call. Now, in the case of what I'm talking about specifically as one of the primary motivating factors here, if you'd had a medical emergency, they would not drop you if the, this same system that we're looking to purchase told them to give pre-arrival instructions. They would not have dropped you. They would give you those pre-arrival instructions and dispatch and roll the remaining part of the call over to our dispatch center because our dispatch center is not capable of doing that at this time. Okay, so. But we can't get my this was literally in Florence County, so more than likely Florence 911 would have one would have picked it up based on probably the tower was in Florence County. All right. So then, does our 911 system let us know where a cell phone is making that call? You can certainly find out what tower it's from. I was going to mention while you were talking, I was thinking to tell you that in the future, when they're able to locate that cell phone very quickly, and that's one of the functions that they're doing with the 911, they'll be able to locate where it's located, and then with geo mapping, it would say this call is coming from inside Darnley County, route it to the Darnley County 911 Center, not to the Florence County 911 Center, even though I'm pinging off of the Florence Tower, tower located in Florence County. Right. But we're not quite that far along, what about us? Technology is there, but it hasn't been put in place just yet. But as we move further and further into 4G and LTE service, uh, more digital, complete coverage all the time, and more sophisticated software, it will be able to do that. It can be done. Um, you can pay for extra outside software that might do that now, but it's not automatic for the phone companies for us at this time. It will be a short. So even though my cell phone has a Florence number, if I'm in Darlington County, it's going to go to Darlington. Not Hopefully Florida. one day soon. Sir? Hopefully one day soon, yes. The mapping should be down to that level. Michelle, have you heard, or no, I wonder, have you heard anything else about that? They were talking about that almost two years ago. Uh -huh. The cell phone towers were mapped to the exact location in jail code. It is, it's doing 99. <coughs> but they're not, they're not making it route that way, though, yeah. just yet. They're okay. not routing for sure. But, if he's in Darlington County and then has a phone cell phone number, it's still going to pick up the Darlington County. It's sure. And it doesn't. They'll route it to us if necessary. I mean, I just don't want to play with 911 like some of my clients do. <laughs> oh, mercy. <laughs> and call y'all all the time. So that's why I'm asking these questions. So I don't call 911 and say, I'm just checking this out. See this. <laughs> they come and this guy comes and arrests me. Yeah, it 
may have come up in that time. We didn't yeah. know, it never got put in place that time. Okay. Or never but, got purchased. But this, this is to put it into place. Yes. Yeah. This is the purchase. Yeah. This is the only responsible bidder for requests for proposals um, to provide a specific level of dispatch capabilities. Mr. Chairman, I, since I've been on the council, and I've heard this been repeated in some areas where the roads are so bad that they don't even go down and get, you know, emergency uh, situations. So are we working on that? I, I know we're talking about purchasing. Yeah, that would be something totally separate. But okay. Let me let me ask now. Okay. And Sheriff, you speak up. I see. Have y'all had any roads in emergency services, fire services, or law enforcement you would not go down at this point? Now, we certainly send out letters when private roads get in disrepair to warn them that they could get to that condition. But since I know what happened, I don't know if you were in place back then, on, out on uh, Billy Farrell, we did have to tell them that we could not get a truck down there. That was years ago, and they took care of it. Um, but we certainly do send out letters. 911 this address it sends out letters when they find out a private road is in such disrepair uh, that it is a possible problem but i'm pretty sure i'm confident i'm not pretty sure i'm confident that every effort would be to go get someone that they need to go get whether it be the sheriff sending his people in for protection or the fire department or ems going in and back of the pickup truck they had to they they're going to go in um, but certainly when people get those letters that you've heard them talk about they get scared but quite honestly that's what the letter's for to tell them that their privately owned or maintained road is in extreme disrepair and it needs to be addressed. So that, that's the purpose of those I mean, last year, I was to know what we're working on. Let's take Budget transfer request to purchase mobile and portable radios in the sheriff's office, 50,739. I move for approval of budget transfer. Yeah. Any discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, aye. Mr. Chairman, I have study. Mr. Kibbell, thanks. This Jeanette has my pleasure. 11 8 Paul Grant for Lamar Dixon. Session project 23,616 Move for approval of the part grant for the Mark Dixie concession. Second. Discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, opposed? Aye. Uh, Administrator of update. Members of the Council, I just have one presentation for you um, this evening. Mr. Stevens with the Executive Director of the South Carolina Aeronautics Commission. He would like to share with you some information concerning airports, the economic impact of airports. And I thought this would be an opportune time for him to do that. Normally we would have PowerPoint, but due to our dislocation, which I will mention why we dislocated it here tonight, once he's had an opportunity to do this presentation. So each of you should have a PowerPoint presentation in front of you prepared. Mr. Have they seen the same presentation at the airport commission members? Yes, sir, they have. They oh, okay. Okay. Mr. Chairman, members of council, thank you very much for the time this evening. Mr. Administrator, thank you for allowing us to step in and take some of your time, your reporting tonight. Um, a couple of things that I'd like to share with you tonight are specifically about your airport, uh, also about the state, the system of airports that we have here in South Carolina. Each one of them plays a role in our system. Each airport does. Each county, actually, we have, we have two counties out of the 46 that don't have airports. Uh, and they would love to have what you have. So I wanted to tell you a little bit tonight about, about what you have, about the value of that airport to your community. And I'll say, uh, Mr. Barry Ken, in fact, here, your airport manager, does a good job and communicates often with us at the state about the airport, about the needs. Also, with the FAA, he and his consultant that he's got that helps him make decisions of planning and investments and dollars for, for uh, keeping the airport up to certain standards. He does a good job. Also, have with me tonight Mr. Chris Bethay. Chris is 
your uh, District 7 representative to the South Carolina Aeronautics Commission. We have you know, seven congressional districts in South Carolina. Uh, now we have seven members of the council and chairman appointed by the governor's eye answer to an eight-member commission. And they, like you, make decisions related to airports and airport improvements across the state and dollars that we, that we have and dollars that we're able to share with you. So tonight I wanted to share with you some of what we've done over the past 18 months. Over the past 18 months, we looked at these, again, the system of airports. We did a system plan and an economic impact study. So, the, again, the 46 counties that we looked at, we studied 57 airports. We have 57 airports in South Carolina that are publicly owned, public use airports. Six of those are commercial service. You have one right next door to you in Florence County. We looked at the ability of the airport's system to meet the needs of the local communities and to meet their own objectives through the study that we defined. Then we compared, estimate, compared annual estimated economic impact contributions at each one of those facilities. So I'm, gonna, I'm on this economic impact section here, if you're following along. And I'll, I'll give you some, some pointers along the way of where I'm at. How we did this, we looked at employment, the payroll for that employment, the expenditures that, um, the spending, I should say, that takes place in and through your airport. So um, Mr. Brown mentioned a little bit ago about the multiplier effect of people that come into the community and spend dollars. You know, they don't just spend it at the airport. They come in and they stay in hotels. They buy, they buy goods and services while they're here, and they spend dollars while they're here. So we looked at the spending, and then ultimately we came out with a total annual economic output for both direct expenditures at the airport and indirect those that come through your airport. The activity centers that we looked at, and I'm on this second page, this page here with the little buttons on the side of it. Uh, we looked at airport management, airport tenants, capital investments that were made, commercial and general aviation visitors, and the dollars that they spent as they came and went through our system of airports. Again, we looked at direct impacts, indirect impacts, which for the indirect impacts, I want to say that uh, a lot of times people question the validity of, and the accuracy of those numbers that are considered indirect impacts because there's a there's a model and there's a methodology that's used often to to estimate those impacts. We use what's called implan, which is a, a widely known, widely used across the country model to help us estimate some of those uh, impacts on the indirect or induced. Ultimately, those with the direct and the indirect gave us our total impacts. For South Carolina, one of the things I want to highlight, I'll start with the top and then kind of work my way down with our own county. We have 122, over 122,000 people that are employed at our airports or jobs that are supported through our airports. We have a payroll of those 122,000 jobs of $4.8 billion. And we are spending $11.5 billion, ultimately giving us $16.3 billion in an annual economic impact Again, in and through our airports, our 57 public and publicly owned public use airports. Part of my responsibility uh, for the state is to communicate the, the needs of each respective airport. So let's talk about Darlington County's airport. So if you have needs, infrastructure needs, Barry does what he does with the FAA to secure federal dollars. He does what he does with me at the state to secure state dollars. And then he comes to you all and asks often for, for dollars to support his efforts out there at the airport as well as the infrastructure improvements he's making. But as I go to the state legislature and I talk about the state portion of those dollars, of those infrastructure needs, I have to be able to tell those senators and those house members what it is we do with the dollars, what they're going for in our county and elsewhere, how we spend them. And one of the things that I often run into, and I'm sure Barry runs into this as he's talking to you all about his needs as well as, you know, Barry, we're putting in these dollars here to, to, to <coughs> your airport, to support the airport. What do we get back? What's the return on investment? You know, how do we know that the dollars are being spent wisely? But part of the study of that $16.3 billion in the state, we identified 600, almost nearly 657 million of that are directly related to taxable events. So there might be taxes, local taxes that are assessed. There might be state taxes, sales tax items. But taxable events, 657 million. 
Well, I'll tell you, I don't live with six hundred fifty-seven million dollar budget each year to save dollars to go back to our airport. I deal with about five million dollars, so we're far, far away from the the revenue that goes in and what actually goes back out to our local airports. I'm now on the Darlington County page, the economic impact page here. Darlington County, we estimated that there were thirty-four total jobs either at the airport, again, or supported through the airport. So airport management, obviously, you have very, you have full-time, part-time, people that help to take care of um, facilities out there. You have others that are related to the airport. So part of your administrator's responsibility, he has some, some part of the oversight of the airport. You have other people, finance people, grants people that probably their job, their salaries, and some of us supported by the work that they do for the airport. You have tenants that are based out here. There's pilots, there's mechanics, there's those that that, um, that have a business out there. You know, some other post is one that's there and obviously employs people to fly those aircraft. So those people are considered as well in the employment numbers. You have capital investments that are made at that airport. So as we repave payments, as we do other projects, the people that you hire to do those projects, those jobs are in part supported by those expenditures. Then you have the visitor spending aspect as well. I know, you know they come into Darlington County, they spend money elsewhere. So again, part of those monies, part of that <coughs> model that we use, estimated jobs. We estimated 34 jobs are supported through your airport. Of those jobs, that represents nearly one and a half, a little over one and a half million dollars in payroll. And you have 2.9 in annual spending annually, 2.9 million, resulting in four and a half million dollars annually, the economic impact of your local airport. And I know you're not spending that kind of money each year to support the airport, not talk that because to that point it doesn't matter. So we looked at the system plan as well. Again, we looked at all of our airports. And one of the things that we did is we had to basically do an inventory of what we have. We started with the inventory, we looked at the roles and responsibilities those airports have. We looked at the forecasts of the traffic that are going to come and go from those airports in the future. We evaluated those airports and that forecast, and we looked at airport roles. Um, within those roles, each role has different objectives to meet that, to be in that role, or to meet that role. Those objectives, sometimes we identified deficiencies, and sometimes we identified areas where the county the, the county airport met those roles. Uh, but if there were deficiencies, we had to do some estimating on cost to get those roles taken care of. And then ultimately, we came up with a plan for our 57 airports across the state of South Carolina. We looked at infrastructure, current infrastructure, as we looked at the roles of the airport, projected aviation demand, market area characteristics, gaps and redundancies that we might have. I'll just speak to one that's here in Darlington, Darlington County. You know, you've got two airports in the county, Darlington County and Hartsville. Hartsville is owned by the city of Hartsville. Darlington obviously is owned by, by Darlington County, and you all have to support that financially. We looked at the FAA roles that they've established in their airport identification method. So now looking at this page here, you can see the different roles that each airport has. And the one thing I want to show you, in your area of South Carolina, Darlington is what's called a corporate business. That's our second tier, second from the top. So you've got your commercial airports at the top, then you've got your business corporate airports, then you've got your uh, business recreation, and then your recreation solely on the bottom. You guys are in the second tier, so you support, obviously, business and corporate type flying. Also, you have recreation guys out there doing their thing. But as you look at your region of South Carolina, if you look at those airports around you, and most of them around you are below where you are at in the role in which you play in our system of airports in South Carolina. Moving on to the, the, the roles defined, I'm not going to get into this detail, but again, you're in that second column, SC2 is what you are. Um, and you can see all the different all the different roles that are there, those, those benchmarks that we looked at for you to be in that role, you can see exactly which ones we looked at in the study. And again, I'm not going to get into that. Um, moving on, though, to what we call report cards for each airport. And these are things identified. And we looked at each airport. We identified, um, again, those roles, the objectives to meet those roles. And we looked at your airport to see how you did. And if you look, this is something I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to applaud you all on. And I know it's not something that just happens overnight. This has happened 
from years of taking care of your airport. I want to say thank you. But as you look at all of these objectives on your scorecard, on your report card here, and you look at the compliance column, you're a yes on everything except for one. And that one is something that all of our airports face. So don't, don't say, you know, we're, not, we're, doing, we're missing the mark because you're not doing a great job. That one is just trees that have to grow in, in an approach to that airport. That's going to happen. That's going to happen over and over. Again, we've got programs at the state of South Carolina at the Aeronautics Commission that we offer to Barry and to Darlington County to take care of the maintenance uh, of your airport. If we provide you a maintenance grant, basically we'll say we're going to pay 75% of those costs to do that maintenance item. You in turn will have to pay 25%. If we help you get a federal grant, they're going to pay, the FAA is going to pay 90% of those total project costs. I'll pay five, you guys can pay five. So as you again move back to that report card, a couple of things that we looked at, obviously, are you meeting the objectives? Yes, you are, I already showed you that. But then we looked at, okay, well, where are we going over the next five years? What capital investments are needed? We did a pavement maintenance study a few years ago, a couple of years ago. And we identified some pieces of pavement at the Darlington County Airport that obviously needs some attention. But I'll say this, your airport manager, his consulting firm that he, that he works with often, they've already identified those as well in their five-year capital investment plan that they had given to the FAA to start the process of seeking that 90%. Um, but over the next five years, we've got just under $9 million identified as some capital investment needed on the pavements out there at the airport. So the question I'm often asked, um, and I'm sure you all have probably thought this in the past, is, is airport ownership worth the investment? You know, for the dollars that we spend at a county that may, may be at times hard for us to decide how dollars are spent, for the dollars that we spend, are we getting the return on investment that we'd like to see out of our airport? And again, I'm going to recap some things here. I told you your estimated annual economic impact is four and a half million dollars. That does not include your local property tax. So as you look at aircraft owners, aircraft that are owned by people in our county, you need to assess the property tax on that. I believe you all are at four percent right now. Yeah. So you are the, as low as you can go in the state, which means that you are going to be um, one of the ones that will be first to get a new customer. Because you have, there are others in the state that are either at six percent or ten and a half percent on their assessment year four, so that's good. One. But those dollars that are assessed on those property taxes are not included in these four and a half million dollars. The five-year study that we looked at identified almost nine million dollars in need over the next five years for, for capital investment. If you divide that out over five, you've got one point seven eight eight million dollars a year average to meet those goals that we identified in the system plan and that your airport has already put on that capital improvement plan, which I assume requires a, a, an approval by the county council since it's your airport. But you look at return on investment. So is it worth the investment to do this? If you take the, the, the four and a half million economic impact and run the formula based on the, the average annual need, you come out with 153 or 43% Again, not counting the local property taxes that are being paid, so that's going to inflate that. That's going to inflate that as you're going to make it look even better. Also, that return on investment just considers that Darlington County would pay that full $8.9 million to make those capital improvements over the next five years. When we know that's not that's not going to be the case, you're going to see 90% federal dollars, 5% from the state. So your 153% return on investment is going to grow exponentially. And it does not include the cost of overhead. Various costs, other staff members' costs that, that support the airport. Those are included, so, um, but they are probably far less than what your return on investment is. So the question again is how, will, how does Darlington County continue to support the airport, continue to increase that return on investment? And I'm going to say, keep doing what you're doing. Support Barry. Let him go after federal grant funds. Let him go after state funds. The dollar that he gets looked from the FIA or from the state is a dollar that you don't need to do what you want to work for. Continue to grow the airport through attracting customers. Try to grow businesses out there. Those that utilize airports, not just that fly into and out of, 
for those that might stay at your airport, those that might get services at your airport, maintenance services, they buy fuel. They, in turn, spend money in your county outside of those airport fences. So, again, you all are doing a great job. I appreciate the support that you have given uh, your airport has to continue to do it. I'm going to let uh, Commissioner Bethay just say, just say a couple words if that's all right. I want to answer any questions. Yes, ma'am. Yes,
left college, went into World War II, went to truck pilot training. He then flew plane number 14 or 16, whichever was the last plane, off of the aircraft carrier with Jimmy Doolittle, flew over from Tokyo, dropped bombs, then because he was the last and was, they were far, too far away, he had to try to get to China. He did make it to China, but he crashed. He was taken into custody by the Japanese in April of 1942, and in October 15 of 1942, he and one other fellow were executed by the Japanese. So when you drive down Farrow Parkway in Myrtle Beach, please remember that that guy gave his life in this country some 76 years ago almost now. I just want to share that with you all so that when you go back to Myrtle Beach, you can say there's a reason that parkway is named. And the, the interesting part on the execution, he was not scheduled to be executed. He was not scheduled to, he was going to be a prisoner transfer. One of the Royal Japanese officers was beating the enlisted man to death. And he dared put his hands on him to stop it, which sealed the, uh, which sealed his fate right there. Yeah, well, I appreciate you bringing that up. That story and those photographs, photographs of him are in the FBO in Myrtle Beach, the, the, the building there, so I'm proud of him. Yeah. And what, what building do so I go look at? It's the main, it's on the general aviation side of the new FBO. Okay. You walk right in there, it's in that hallway. Of Down the Aerodrome Drive or whatever it is. Yes, yeah, yeah, the opposite side of the corporal. Yeah, I understand. It was a, you know, it was a wonderful experience. I, I, I had to comment, I told my wife, I said, y'all they they appreciate this, they had to keep, keep stopping it because I saw more Spirit Airlines take off than I knew that they had. <laughs> uh, and so I said, you know, they could run that through, run that thing in Florence, it wouldn't have to stop at all. That's right. <laughs> you got to take it over, Spirit. Eh? Yeah. yeah. Thank y'all. One of your finest, uh, Charlie Blister. You know what Charlie Blister? Hi, Charlie. Charlie's cool. Charlie's in Myrtle Beach and he's a great friend of mine and he's a, he's a darling to God. So. Tell him his teacher said the word. Thank you all for your time. Two other quick things. I'll mention while you were displaced up here tonight. Unfortunately, about two weeks ago this past Friday, there was a rather bad leak out at the courthouse and eggs facility. And thank goodness, as y'all know, EMS uses the back part of the building for quarters. Um, they came back from a call Saturday afternoon. Um, and thought the ice machine was spilling water. They dried it up and it kept coming and it kept coming. As they noticed it's coming out from under the walls, one of the um, restrooms in the men's restroom of the laboratory pipe broke and it ran for at least a, a day. Um, two inches of water in the mattress also from two inches of water in your council room. Um, if that had been an unoccupied building, it would have another 36 hour rather than by day. So part of that building is tore out now the bottom. So I think it's about dry. They're assessing on what the insurance will pay for with the company. Um, I will mention briefly, very briefly, Councilman Kilgo asked me to speak about the opportunity zone. Well, we attempted to get some detailed information from the Department of Commerce. They're not ready to tell us exactly what those opportunity zones will mean, but if, you, if you're not aware, um, Senator Scott? Yes. Tag something on to the federal budget and it's for $1.5 billion. Is that right? From, anyway, for economic development and stimulus packages throughout the nation, and they were looking for zones of opportunity. Um, well, the municipalities with the county and the county could not submit the same location. Parcel contact us and stated they'd like to submit the new parcel industrial park area. So they submitted that, and then we submitted the current I 20 industrial park. And from our understanding, though, we've gotten no official word. On paper, we've been notified that both of those industrial park areas were designated as opportunity zones. What that means and what incentives will come, we've got to wait on the Department of Commerce to work those details out. As soon as we know, hopefully that will entice someone to more likely want to invest in one of those locations. So that's all I have for tonight. Unless you have specific questions. Yes, questions, comments, give up. Mr. Chairman, uh, last week I attended a National Association of Counties meeting in Charleston uh, dealing with 
jails and overcrowding and dockets and how to move cases in a, an expedited way so that we don't have so many pre-trial individuals in our county jails. Uh, Charleston County has developed a committee which includes everybody. I, I, I mean, I'm just a big county, but they got a lot of people on that committee. But um, I would, I've not had a chance to give that information to the administrator yet. We'll have a copy of everybody, including our sheriff, um, on what we can do to try to do some things. So I, one of them was what they call uh, stop and release, where if you've got somebody that's charged with simple possession of marijuana and you give them a blue ticket, you don't go haul them off to jail and let them sit there for a month before they go before the magistrate. My understanding that's what we're doing in Darlington now. And it, that makes a drastic difference in, in jail population. Just that one charge, simple possession of marijuana. Thank you, sir. Uh, I talked about this in the budget workshop, and since the budget is seems to be uh, well in hand, I move to begin the transition to end Donovan County House in May Labor. Second motion. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? No. Fails.